If you've ever struggled with finding the time to grow your Etsy print-on-demand shop, or if you're just not quite sure how to maximize the time that you do have, welcome back to part four of a new series where I walk you through the time-blocking strategies that I use to efficiently build my six-figure Etsy print-on-demand shop in just pockets of time. Today's time block is all about creating the actual products based on the designs that we generated in part two using the research that we did in part one. And in part three, we created the mock-ups for these products with the designs on them so that once we get to that finalization part in Etsy, that'll be part five. We'll have everything completely ready to go. If you haven't seen the first few videos in this series, definitely make sure you check them out, especially because the research that we did in part one will directly influence the first stages of product listing that we're going to be doing in this one. If you've been with the series so far, you're probably starting to understand how all of these little bits and pieces fit together. So what makes this different from other strategies you've probably heard of when growing a new Etsy print on demand business from scratch? Well, I have put to run an entirely other handmade business full time, which means that when I set out to grow my Etsy print on demand business just in time for Q4 in 2022, I needed to be super strategic with the small amounts of time that I had to actually work on it. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Mandy and as the owner of multiple six figure businesses, including Etsy print on demand shops, my goal is to provide you with strategies to simplify the journey and scale your business faster so that you can ultimately thrive with print on demand. If you're just joining in, the whole purpose of the series is to cover how I spend my time in what I call time blocks and the very intentional activities that I accomplish in these small pockets of time in order to be able to grow and move my business forward, not only quickly, but effectively. This includes things like researching trends, designs, and keywords, then using that information to influence the designs that I create, then getting all those designs into mockups super efficiently, and then finally getting products actually created with my print on demand provider so that I can then sell them on Etsy. As a quick recap from the last three videos, my focus on the research was in looking at a sub niche to create as an additional section in the dog mom shop that I built for sharing on this channel. We discovered together that the Doberman Pinscher breed would be a great addition based on Etsy searches and competition. Then we looked more intentionally at trending styles and themes. We looked at market demand in Etsy based on keywords and existing products that already have bestseller badges or are in demand in carts. We looked at gaps in the marketplace in terms of designs that could potentially be added to this shop that are different from what's already out there. And we looked in general at products that are already selling that we could potentially translate into different designs with our Doberman Pinscher theme. And while we were searching, we also made notes of keywords that we saw using tools like Everbee and E-Rank so that we'd have a better idea of what to include in our titles and tags once we actually get to listing. Then in the design and batching videos, I took you behind the scenes while I batch created 12 different designs based around that Doberman Pinscher dog mom theme, as well as some of the trending styles that we saw. And then we batched all of those into mockups using Canva. For these videos, I'm using roughly 30 minutes as my benchmark for the time block itself. But in actual practice, it does depend depending on what I'm working on that day and what my schedule looks like. The beauty of time blocking and breaking tasks down into different sections is that it ensures you can focus on one particular part of the process at a time and do it very efficiently and quickly because you're able to repeat the same processes again and again and do it very quickly. And so whether you have small bits of time to work on it, or if you've got larger time blocks available, you're still able to move your shop forward. For example, if I have 15 minutes while I'm waiting for a doctor's appointment, I might pull out my phone and start browsing Pinterest or different trendy sites for some ideas. But if I happen to have a full hour to work on my shop, I might spend the first 30 minutes working on some designs and then the next 30 minutes working on batching those into mock-ups for my shop. Again, it allows you to break down your time and use what you have available to still accomplish things to be as efficient as possible. For the purposes of this series, I'm breaking down this listing part into two different parts. Because again, when I'm actually doing time blocks, I am generally focused on staying in one relative place at a time and repeating the same parts of the same process over and over again within a batch. 
and in doing so have found that by not having to hop back and forth between different systems constantly, I'm able to get more volume accomplished. And so for today's video, I'm going to be focused on getting all of my Printify tasks done as part of this listing process. But before we head into Printify, I want to make sure I have a few things organized first. First, I have my folder up that has all of my designs in it so that I know where it is and it's easily accessible. I also have Canva up so that if I need to refer back to any of my mockups to see which colors I used, I can actually just hover over each of these and it will flip through just like a listing video. It'll flip through all of the images. So I don't even have to click into it. I can just see exactly which color sweatshirts I used for each of the designs. Because remember, not every design worked on every single color. So we did have a few variances there and I wanna make sure I get it right in Printify. And then I also have my keyword list up. So these are just some of the notes that I made when we were doing some of the research. Remember when we were looking in E-Rank, we had our keyword list. I've got one that I generally have for my dog mom items. So you can see I've got a few different general terms as well as a few different breeds in here, but I specifically had a few different ones that were specific to Doberman. So I've pulled in a couple of those to make sure that I've got that information accessible. We also looked out on Etsy. As you recall, I used Everbee, which is a Chrome extension. I've started using that one more frequently just because I've gotten some really good data and information. What I love about it is when I just type in a search, I typically start with a general search for in this case, dog shirt, not Doberman, not Doby, not dog mom, just general dog shirt because again, I want volume and I want data. I wanna see what's out there. I wanna see what's moving. I wanna see what's selling. And so I start broad and then I start to get my keywords and specifics from there. So if I looked at product analysis for that and how I can get insight into keywords on products that are actually selling and moving is by looking at the keywords that those shops are using and looking at the search volume and the competition. So if I wanna see the more popular products, I'll search by this monthly sales figure. I can see the highest volume seller here, which is this custom dog ears sweatshirt. It's only a little over a year old, so that's not too bad. And so if I click on that and I move my face out of the way, you can see the title is here. We can see all of the information about this listing. But what I'm looking for is this keyword list down here. And if it cuts off any of your keywords a little bit, you can always move that over. But essentially I'm looking at volume of searches and I'm looking at competition. And actually I could use the dog face sweatshirt for a couple of the designs. So that is one that I would want on my list. And even a few others with some of this competition, that is still a very high search volume. And some of these are not too bad in competition. It is higher, but it's okay. Don't be afraid of higher competition keywords because what you can do is you can mix those and combine them in your long tail keyword phrases to get the best of both worlds you can break into some of those more saturated competition searches by starting to rank in more specific sub niches. So if I were to combine, for example, dog mom sweatshirt, it's got a good search volume, higher competition. But if I add Doberman dog mom sweatshirt, remember Doberman from our other keyword search and E-rank, that right here, I'll use my face to underline it. So Doberman had really good searches and relatively low competition. So if we were to combine this specific keyword with the broader term, that is how we can start to rank higher in some of these bigger competition areas. And so as we were doing the search last time, we also looked at different terms like camping or even hiking. Those are all things that we could combine here. But for now, I've got my specific Doberman kind of a dog mom list here. And I'm even going to add dog mom sweatshirt 
to this list just so that we've got it on here and are ready for us when we start to go look at titles in the product listing itself. Essentially, these keywords will become part of long tail keyword phrases. And what I mean by that is essentially taking these one or two keywords and combining them with other terms and potential search keywords that an ideal customer would be using in order to make a search phrase. And the purpose of doing this is really around search engine optimization or SEO, which really just entails having terms and keywords that are going to more closely match what someone is actually searching for. If you want to take a deeper dive, I have module three as part of my free masterclass course here. There's also homework and worksheets as part of my course. So again, it's all available on my channel as a course playlist. So you can check that out and take a deeper dive where we'll walk through that. But essentially that is why I keep this keyword list so that I can eventually have some specifics to refer back to once I get to those titles and tags. Now you may be wondering, how come there's not a whole video or time block designated to just SEO? Well, I already got a good baseline established for this niche because of all the research that we did in that very first part. Because remember, when we were looking at what was selling and doing well on Etsy, we were looking not only at general products, but we were also looking at some of the other dog moms and different themes that are already out there and doing well. We did research on our target audience, we looked at words and phrases that would resonate with them. And again, while we were doing our research, we were also looking at those different titles, tags, and keywords that would help us along the way. That is why that research is so critical. It gives you that baseline knowledge for not only creating your designs, but then also coming up with your keywords and your titles and your tags. And all of that becomes much easier. It's really easy to get into analysis paralysis when you start taking deep dives into E-Rank or Etsy and trying to find that perfect keyword to use for your product. But the reality is most of the time, those keyword searches aren't going to get specific for your exact listing. You have to be able to take the knowledge and the learning that you're getting from systems or from Etsy, combine that with the research that you're doing on your target audience and understand your ideal customer enough and how they will be searching for that item that you're selling and kind of put all that together. Remember, each of these different time blocks that I've covered, whether it's full scale research on Etsy or Pinterest or Google Trends or out on trendy sites, or whether it's sitting down to batch new designs, or whether it's creating the products themselves and trying to come up with the titles and keywords to use for them, it's all based on different skills. But the good news is that the more you practice these and the more you become comfortable with the process and understanding how it all really works, the easier it will get over time and the faster you'll get over time. Keep doing the work though. Don't wait for it to come to you. Keep moving forward. The goal is progress, not perfection. So now that we've got everything organized and ready to go, let's dive into part four and start making some products, shall we? If you're starting out from scratch and you've never created a product in Printify, you're essentially going to start in the catalog. And so we'll start at the very beginning and start there. So the product that I'm creating is a sweatshirt. You'll essentially be able to pick your product, decide what you plan on putting your design on. There's lots of options. You can see one of the best sellers is the Gildan 18,000. That's kind of your go-to standard crew neck sweatshirt. Comfort Colors is also a very popular one. Just remember that it's going to have a much higher price point. If you wanna see a comparison between a couple of these different sweatshirt options, I've linked a video that I've got on that down in the description so that you can check that out and see how I run different profit and pricing comparisons on those. But for the purpose of this, my favorite tends to be the Gildan 18,000, so we'll start there. Your next step is going to be selecting your print provider. One of my favorites is SwiftPod, um, and that's because they've got a decent amount of colors and they've always had a really competitive price point. And so once you've selected the provider that you want to use, you'll simply click on Start Designing. 
And so from there, you'll see the design generator. And so then from there, we'll go out and grab the design that we want to start with. I'm just going to start with the first one. We'll open that. And then obviously you can see you're not going to see it because it's a white design and I've got a white sweatshirt selected. If you click on select, you can bring in the other colors. So I'm going to select black. I'm going to unselect white. And I know I had a few other of these colors. And so I'm going to select that. If I don't remember, again, I can come over here, just click on Canva. And here was our white letters. And so if I just let it scroll for a second, I can see all the colors that I used for it. So I've got all of those selected the way I want to. And so if I bring this up, the next thing I'm going to do is adjust my design. So obviously I want it nice and centered. I use collar as kind of my guide there. And then if you look over here, these are in inches. And so because I have this design almost stretched to the edge, this would be close to about 14 inches. It's a little bit big. And so for this one, I do want it to really stretch across the design, but I'm going to shrink it just a little bit. And then I generally still leave a little bit of margin in here. This dotted line is the edge of where your design is. It's the print area. You don't want to extend beyond it because it's going to cut off the design. If I do that, you can see it's going to cut it off. So I, and I don't want it too close to the neckline either, or it's going to be like up under the chin and look really weird. So again, we're just going to bring it just down a little bit below that collar line. And then I do use the preview area over here which is where the mock-up generator is. So you can actually see on a mock-ups roughly what it's going to look at. They recently updated their mock-up generator. So you can see this is one of their new mock-ups to make it look a little bit more realistic so you can get a better idea of how it's going to look. And then you can also see it on an actual person in this mock-up generator as well. And so that looks pretty good. I might actually bring this up just a tiny bit. And then we're going to call that good. There are other alignment options on here as well, but again, for your typical sweatshirt, shirt, regular t-shirt, it's more often than not going to be centered unless it's a pocket design. So once we're done there, we're going to save product. And then that is going to bring us a listing outline. Some sellers prefer to do all of their work in Etsy first. I typically prefer to do as much of mine as possible in Printify. And that's because I use Printify as my template, more or less, when I'm creating new listings. So the first thing that I do is I'm actually going to uncheck all of these because I don't use any of the mockups in Printify. I always use my own. And when this connects over to Etsy, I don't want these mockups to take forever to load. The reason I leave one batch of mockups in here is because you'll see that I am publishing these to Etsy as hidden listings, meaning they're going to go to the giraffes. And because I'm doing all of these in batches, I'm not finishing them one at a time. If I were to send this listing over to Etsy and not have any of the mockups attached. So essentially if I uncheck this mockups and I did it as all of these batches for all of these designs, they'd essentially go over as empty images. And so I'd have a listing with different variations of titles, but unless I'm making a note of every single title, I have no idea which design goes which with listing. And that could be a problem. So I leave one single mockup in It'll shorten the load time when it's saving over to Etsy, but then I won't have to worry about remembering which design and mockups go with which listing because I'll be able to see which listing is which. Then when we get to this middle part, this is essentially your listing details. And so title and description, they're going to have a basic title in here. Do not leave this title in here. This title will not help you at all on Etsy. You need to replace this with long tail keyword phrases 
that are going to help you rank within Etsy based on the research and your niche and the search terms of your ideal customer. So to start with that, remember we had our Doberman listing notes here with some keywords. And so when I'm coming up with long tail keywords, I have a little bit of a formula, if you will, around how I come up with long tail keywords, or, or at least how I brainstorm what to include in those long tail keyword phrases. So don't overthink this. If you've already done research, if you've already thought about who your target customer is, you're halfway there. So then my formula for brainstorming your long tail keyword phrases is make a list, have three different columns. In the first column, you're going to think about your product and your design, and you're going to think about three different facts or descriptors that could be used for that item. Not necessarily what's on it. So if you've got a funny phrase on it, don't necessarily use the phrase unless it's some sort of trending phrase. And that's because most people aren't typing in a phrase when they're searching for something to buy. They're typing in a product type, they're typing in a theme, they're typing in a person. So when I say three facts or descriptors for the item, that could be things like the aesthetic. Maybe it's cottage core, maybe it's retro. Or maybe there's a theme like camping or hiking, or maybe there's a specific travel destination like Italy or Texas. And sometimes it's also just general stuff like a sweatshirt or a t-shirt or things like that. Make a list, think of at least three. If you can come up with more, great. Then in another column, you're going to make a list of at least three types of recipients for that product. So it could be a dog mom, it could be an aunt or an uncle or a sister, or it could be a bachelorette, or it could be a groom, or it could be mother of the groom, or it could be golfer. Think of three different recipients that could be for your product. Think of your ideal customer and think about how they could be referred to as a recipient for that item. And there might be a few and that's great. And then finally, in that last column, you're going to think of three different occasions or holidays or ways that the product can be utilized by that ideal customer. So this could be holidays, but this could also be birthday gifts. It could be engagement gifts. It could be for someone getting a new dog. It could be for someone getting a new teaching job. Whatever it might be, think about what your product is and how it could be utilized for that ideal customer and why they might be buying something like that. Again, this is where you're trying to get into their head and think about the types of search terms that your product would be ideal for so that you can combine that with other keywords and really target that search more closely. So for mine here, as part of this example, remember this one is for a Dolby mom. And then we also have the personalization in here. So my example might be personalized Doberman dog mom sweatshirt, comma. I like to separate mine with comma because I feel like it reads easier and it really just kind of separates out my different phrases. Not a huge fan of the long run on titles that you sometimes see on Etsy. So then I might also say retro Doberman pincher shirt. Then I might also use the word custom in there. Custom Dolby. Remember Dolby was a common term in the Doberman pincher owner world. So you might say custom Dolby dog mom shirts. So another one that we had from our Everbee search was a dog lover. So we could even combine that with Doberman dog lover sweatshirt gift. And if we click out, we can see how we're doing on a number. So this is our 140 characters that we get within Etsy for our listing. So if I wanted to swap out a couple of these, I would want to have more occasions in here. So instead of shirt twice, I might say custom to be dog mom. I could say birthday. 
and I could have that be a little bit different. And so I try to use these 140 characters as wisely as possible when you're coming up with your titles. So then when we get down to our description, you'll see that there's already some basic information in there. So this will get us started. And so quite often I'll look at this, as long as it doesn't say something weird around prints, colors, great, essentially something that would be more so for me as the seller, I'll leave it in here because this gives a good kind of specification for the fabric blend, how it fits, runs true to size, what kind of label it has. So typically I have kind of a formula, if you will, for my description. The first one and two sentences is what I utilize for my keywords. A lot of people will have these are really long, like two and three paragraph descriptions. Again, not necessary as the search algorithm is only really going to look at the first little bit of it. And so I like to utilize the rest of it and make sure that we're reducing any barriers to the purchase by giving the customer information on the listing, on the style and what they can expect or not expect. And so for this first couple of sentences, I've got kind of a little bit of a template that I use. And so I'll pull that in and I'll show you what I mean. So the first part is really more about the listing itself. So this first part has a couple sentences that tend to highlight what I want to make sure I have in this first couple sentences. So for this one, I might say perfect collegiate vibe for a stylish Adobe dog mom. So I might have a different aesthetic in here. This one's collegiate. I also have kind of that retro one. So it just kind of depends. And so I've got just a couple little plug and play areas. And because this shop is really focused around dog ownership, that's why I've got some of these in there. So then again, for this one, I already have Adobe in here. So then this one, I might say Doberman as my other keyword. And then it's got great birthday gift, cozy sweatshirt. Again, really capturing some of those keywords that I'd want in there to really describe it like a human would read it, not full of a bunch of weird keywords or commas or phrases that don't make sense. So this next part, I've got all items made to order, typically ship within one week from one of our printing partners. I do disclose that, not everyone does. I just find that if something does come up down the road, it's better to establish that up front. And then there's no kind of awkward interaction with the customer down the road if something should come up. It's not required. It's just been my personal preference and it's worked really well. Um, allow sufficient time for production and shipping. Again, this is what was already in there from Printify. So then after this, I've got the second part of my description which is if they've got concerns, if they need to reach out. I've got care instructions in there. I've got a note about not being able to offer gift messaging. I have information in here about the fact that it's made with direct to garment, what that means, how that compares to what they might be familiar with in terms of screen printing or vinyl, and then slight variances in color. Um, just a disclaimer about that. And again, if they've got concerns to reach out through Etsy messaging. Then when we get down to shipping and I keep all of this just saved as a template for my description, it just makes it easier and faster um, as I go. And again, this is just really if I'm creating one from scratch, you'll see as we do subsequent ones, I then use these as the basis for all of the rest of my batch that I do in here. Shipping will grab the one that makes sense. We've got Swift Pod, so I've got that shipping profile set up. When we get down the pricing, I've got other videos on pricing. I'm not going to take a deep dive here on the hows or the whys, but essentially for pricing, my preference is I set mine by profit margin. And that's because as you'll notice with SwiftPod, they've got different prices for different colors and sizes. So to make sure that I'm accounting for that and not actually losing money in any of the orders that I have, I set mine by profit margin. As long as you're using a profit calculator, you can set whatever pricing strategy you're comfortable with but I have found that it works really well to do a profit margin. 
I generally use 65% as my profit margin because then that allows me to be able to run daily sales as well. And so we'll keep scrolling. I've got that. And again, I can set my bulk pricing very easily by doing it that way and not having to come in and edit every single one of these in order to adjust prices. Then when I get down here, because I'm doing this as a batch and I'm not going to finish these in Etsy right now, I'm going to publish it in Etsy, but I want them to be hidden. So I click on a hide in store. I want to show all variants and I'm going to leave mockups in there again because I want to be able to remember which design went with which listing so that I get my mockups in there correctly. And then once I'm done there, I'm going to hit publish. And that is our first listing in Printify. And so that will load, that will show as publishing. And then when it's done, if you publish directly to SE as a live listing, it will show as published like these do. And if you're publishing it as a hidden listing initially, this will show as hidden, and then it will appear in your drafts in Etsy. Once we've got our first one in here, again, it'll show up as hidden if you've done it like I've done, which is in draft mode, essentially. We can verify, and if we go into our shop and go to draft, we'll see it's right there and waiting for us, but we're not to Etsy yet. Again, remember in this batch, I want to focus on repeating this process quickly and efficiently by staying right here in Printify. And so for this one, now that we've got one in here, this will essentially serve as our template. And this is what I do. As you can see, I have lots of unpublished. This is what I do whenever I'm creating a personalized listings, whenever I'm creating a new listing, some of these are published. I start with one that's already in here because I know, especially if I'm doing it by brand, I know that all of my Gildan 18,000s are going to have what I need in there for my Gildan 18,000 sweatshirts. I don't have to copy and paste. I don't have to go back to my little template that I've got over here saved as a note. It's all in there. So then really I'm just updating a couple small pieces of it as I go and moving on to the next one. So I'll show you what I mean. So we've got this one done here. Once it's done and finished, it'll essentially unlock and then you can duplicate it. So this is going to create a new one. I'm going to go into edit design and then I'm going to upload my next design. Head to my device, go into my folder, and then I'm actually going to skip a couple of these for a very specific reason. We saw in the last one that it had a personalization piece in there. My process to go very quickly is I'll create one that has the personalization and all of the colors that I want for a listing, and then I'll do the rest in Etsy and duplicate it on the Etsy side. And the reason I do that is because once it's over to Etsy, I'm bringing over, it brings over all the price, it brings over all the description. And because I set my prices as a percentage, it's a lot easier and faster to start it in Printify and then finish it in Etsy. You can start personalized listings on Etsy. You've seen me do that in previous videos. I've shown you how to do both ways when it comes to personalization. When I'm doing it personally, again, I find it easier to start with my pricing structure built in and ready to go in Printify, have all of that come over with the colors that I use and everything I need, and then I finish it in Etsy. And then if I'm creating more personalized listings in that batch, I simply then duplicate those listings on the Etsy side change the mock-ups, and then finish from there. You'll see that in the next video, but that is going to be why I'm specifically going to skip these two other designs that specifically have the personalization in them. And so then I'm going to come over here to this Adobe Mom that had the heart on it. This one is not personalized. It's one of our additional designs that we created in our batch. So again, I'm going to adjust the sizing just a little bit on this so that it mostly fills the space in more of that collegiate style. I'm going to check it on the preview. And again, we've already got our colors in here locked in. 
because we had it from the previous listing. We used that previous listing, did it once, and created that essentially as our template. So now this one, I can save it. It's going to bring me back to the listing. And then all I'm going to do for this one is again, uncheck all of these additional mockups that I don't want to transfer over. I just want this one in here so I know which design is associated with that listing. And then I'll come down here and edit the title. And so for this one, because it's not personalized, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to start with retro in this one. And then I'm going to look at some of my other keywords that I had and I'm going to grab one of these other ones. So we've got dog mom sweatshirt in there. We've got dog mom birthday. We've got dog lover sweatshirt. We've got dog mom sweatshirt. Let's get rid of this retro and I'm going to use more of the theme that we've got. So not necessarily one of those keywords. I'm going to go more so for that trending style of a collegiate shirt. And so let's go with that term. It'll describe it slightly and give us a slightly different variation in that title. And so we'll reuse that, what we've got in the description. If we look at the rest of this, there's really, again, as a template, nothing else that we really need to change with this listing. And so this is good to go. And again, that's why I create these as templates and using a, use them as a starting place whenever I'm in Printify and creating a new listing because it just saves so much more time. I'm going to uh, grab my shipping profile. It's going to be with SwiftPod. All of this, again, as part of my template is already saved in there. So I'm not changing anything. And so when I hit publish, it's going to send it over to Etsy, but it'll be in draft mode. Now, the beauty of this is while this is publishing, I can keep right on moving. So because I already have a template in there and saved, I can essentially restart from that same one. So again, edit design. We'll get rid of that one. We'll grab a new design. Let's do one of the others that's in that same style. I'm going to go double check in Canva that we still are using these same six colors. I think I might need to add in white. Let's go see. So we're doing trekking. We've got sand there. We've got the same green, navy, black, gray, dark gray, ash, and white. So ash and white are what we need. So then I can come up here to select colors. I can go ash and white and then I'm going to shrink this just a little bit so it's not quite so huge on the shirts and we'll center that and we'll save. Now for this one we've got a slightly different theme and that is why cross niching can add value and help you stand out with your listings because after I remove those additional mock-ups when I come down here obviously it's not personalized, but when we were doing our research, camping, hiking, outdoors, mountain themes, those can all be cross utilized, even though this is specifically for a Doberman Pinscher dog mom sweatshirt. And so what we can do is to be, again, remember the beginning of your title is the most important piece of it. So you'll recall if we were making those different categories around how we might describe this shirt in terms of an aesthetic or a theme, that is one way that we can utilize that. We could specifically say trekking. Trekking is going to be probably a little bit too specific in terms of describing exactly what's on there. We don't necessarily need to describe the words that are on there. We're more so thinking about the theme or the aesthetic. So in this case, I might go with hiking Doberman dog mom sweatshirt. Retro is still fine. I don't necessarily want custom in here. And so I can remove that. 
And so we've got hiking as one of our keywords. If I want to swap out this custom, I could say something about like mountain doby dog mom or birthday. Again, we're still within that 134 to 140. Instead of collegiate, I could say outdoors or I could say the perfect great outdoors. Again, we don't need to overcomplicate it, especially with a description piece. We're more so looking and focusing on, again, one to two sentences is all you need. Etsy's algorithm isn't going to read a whole lot further than that. And so focus on first one to two sentences, incorporate some of your keywords, and then leave it alone. You don't need to overcomplicate it or overthink it. We want the rest of this description to really focus on answering any questions that the customer might have about the product itself. Because we added in more colors, I want to make sure I have the correct prices for those. So again, because I keep it easy with my pricing structure, I can just reset all of them back to 65%, hide in store, and publish. While that's publishing, you can see while we're still waiting for this other one to load and process over to Etsy, we've already gotten another one done. And that is why, again, I use templates. It allows me to move very quickly in Printify and not have to wait on any of these other processes. I don't like sitting around and waiting for things to happen. I want to keep moving forward. And so that is the purpose of why I like to do it this way, because I'm not waiting on anything. So again, duplicate that one, can come back here, edit design, get rid of that one. Going to add in another one, I'm gonna grab another one with the words. And so let's go with thankful option. We'll add that into our design. Now again, because I started with one that didn't have the other colors added, I'll need to add them again. So it kind of depends, again, it's okay if you're having to repeat a couple of the same steps. It's not about being super rigid or disciplined about this. It's more so just finding little ways, little shortcuts to move faster through the process. Don't get hung up if you have to repeat a couple of the same steps again. It's not going to be a deal breaker. Again, it's more so grand scheme of things, keeping things streamlined and simple throughout the process. So we've got that on here. We've got that centered. If we take a peek at the mock-up, we can again make sure that we've got this where we'd like it. That looks fine. And these are the additional colors that we used. We can save that one. We're going to uncheck our mock-ups again. And as we head down to product description, we've got a new opportunity with this one. So again, it's not personalized, so we can swap out that first one. We want to lead with keywords that are really going to help us out in the search algorithm. And so what we could do for this one, because it's thankful, we could say that this is a thanks giving Doberman Dog Mom sweatshirt. Retro is fine because it still has that retro font. We want to get rid of custom in this case because again, it's not one of our custom listings. And so in this case, if we wanted to really target that Thanksgiving fall time, we could say fall or autumn, Adobe dog mom birthday, or we could use thankful. Thankful is still more of a descriptor. And so again, there's a fine line of describing what's on there and really thinking about is your customer, is your targeted customer going to be searching for thankful dog mom sweatshirt or might they instead be searching for fall dog mom sweatshirt or fall themed dog mom or fall mom shirt. So again, Thanksgiving is a big one. I would definitely use that thankful. That one again is probably a little less likely to be searched. And so I would actually lean a more towards going the fall route. And so again, I'm going to swap out this collegiate word. And if we used fall up in our title, we could use autumn down here as again, a way to just kind of mix things up a little bit. 
again at a price margin, bring this all back up to 65, apply, all this is the same, and we can hit publish. And you'll see uh, sometimes these loading images are slow. There is nothing you can do about that other than, again, starting with templates and versions in Printify that you've previously saved. It'll go a lot faster. So again, because these are still loading, I'm going to start with this one again. We'll edit the design, delete this one, and see which one we're on. We can do the pocket one. Let's go with that one for now. We'll actually want to remove a couple colors and add a couple colors. While that's loading, let's take a peek at what we've got over here. And I believe most of these are just going to be lighter colors. So let's head back here. We're going to grab our lighter colors and remove our darker colors. And so this is one where I watched the size. So remember when I designed this, I filled up that whole space. Part of that is because then, even though I was using a very large template for this design, I can actually watch the sizing here and know roughly about how big I'm making that design. Typically about 4.8 or so, knowing that I do have a little bit of margin around the edge here is about right. And so if I zoom in on my workspace, just like we did with the mockups that we were creating, we are going to use that same rule of thumb for our actual placement of design. So you can see the right outermost point of the collar is right here. And if we follow that line straight down, we want this roughly to hit the center of the design. And we're just about there. Again, I don't want this too far up towards the neck. And if you need to type in over here, you can. We're talking about very small amounts of measurement in this particular case. And so we've got him about centered. And sometimes, depending on the design, I will flip back and forth a couple times with the preview just to make sure I'm satisfied with where it lands. Keep in mind that with personalization, you're going to be re-uploading it anyway. But this is one of those situations where putting in the time to get the adjustment and placement right now is actually going to save you a decent amount of time on the flip side of it. Even though we've already got that other listing for personalization, I like to create a pocket one, especially if you don't already have one. Again, just because the placement with pocket designs can be so finicky that spending a little time up front getting the placement right means that when an order comes in, you grab the template that you've already got saved here. You'll duplicate this just like you would with any other template design that you've got. You'll duplicate this listing Add your updated design with, for example, the name of the dog that's getting personalized here. And then when you come in here and actually swap out your design, I actually leave one on here. So like I would leave this template on here, add in another design over top of it. And so I can just grab the same one. If we were to say layer this on top, because then I can see what that size was. I can see what I used the first time, 4.7. And then when I click on this, I can change this one to 4.7. And all I need to do is just line them up so that they match. And then you would just delete the first one that you had on there. And again, it saves you an incredible amount of time of having to fuss with it and readjust every single time you get an order. Instead, you simply size it back down to what you need based on the template that you've already got in there and you're good to go. So with this one, we are all set with this one. We've got our four colors. That looks good. Then I'll go through and delete. And again, in theory, yes. As I mentioned with the other personalized options, you could simply created originally in Etsy and not create one here and printify as a template. Or you could 
just like we're going to do with the other personalized options here, simply copy this listing once you have it done in Etsy and use that one and then just upload the different mockups for it. You could, and there is nothing wrong with that. I just find that again, especially if you're new or if placing designs takes a little bit longer for you, doing it this way will save you some steps on the back end so that you're not quite as anxious or uncomfortable about it when an actual order comes in because then you'll know that you've already got it set and placed. And then all you need to focus on with those, instead of getting overwhelmed of creating the whole thing in that moment, while someone's actually waiting on an order, you've got your template, duplicate that, add your design, and then link it with the order and you're good to go. So because this is going to be personalized, we can leave that there. What I am going to do though, I'm going to say personalized Doberman Dog Mom sweatshirts, and then I'm going to say pocket Doberman Pincher shirt, and then remember one of the keywords that we saw when we were in Everbee doing our research on the competition and keywords that they were using for listings that were doing well. One of them was a dog face shirt. And so let's see how we can incorporate that in here. And so for that, I've already got shirt here. So then I'm going to say pocket Doberman Pincher dog face shirt and you can see that makes this a little bit long and so we've already got sweatshirt in here so let's get rid of sweatshirt and that leaves us with Dover and dog lover gift and so we'll still have a combination of keywords that incorporates sweatshirt but we've now got a fitting within that 140 so that is perfect then we don't particularly have a theme for this one it is just a personalized pocket design and so we could say something like modern. We can keep it simple here. We don't need to overthink particularly the description. Your two most important parts in your listing, three actually, are going to be your title, your tags, and your pictures, particularly that first listing photo. Those are the three things. The title and the tags are going to get your listing in searches and appearing in searches and then that first listing photo is what stops the scroll those are really your three biggest priority areas that you want to make sure you get right and spend time researching and understanding how your customers are searching for items and that you are investing in some good mock-ups and spending some time getting those right, particularly for that very first one in your listing. So your goals with Etsy are to get seen and to stop the scroll. You are responsible for those and the actions that you take with these are what make that happen. So as we continue here, we'll keep scrolling can add this in here. We swapped out some colors. Again, if you, again, normally I would start with a template that already has what I need for the most part, but if not, it takes two seconds to add these in and then we'll keep scrolling and then we will say publish. Now that we're back in here, you can see we've got a couple that have finished loading. So that's good. We've still got a couple that are still working on it. So because this one has fewer colors, this next one I want is going to have this four colors again. So we're going to duplicate, same process, edit, get rid of this, head to our folder, and let's grab that one. And then again, remember with this one, we've just got lighter colors. So I'm going to get rid of some of these and then we'll shrink this. So I mentioned we were making mock-ups for these. I make these so that they are not quite all the way across. Again, if you're not quite sure where that cutoff is, make sure you zoom in. We wouldn't want to lose any ears on our Dobermans here. So we'll save that one. Again, not personalized. This one is going to be relatively straightforward. And so we're just going to keep this one simple and get rid of this first part. And we're just going to call this exactly what it is, which is a Doberman dog mom sweatshirt. We don't need retro in here. We could again use the fact that it was originally from a watercolor painting, but 
again, we could, but is your ideal buyer really going to be searching for watercolor Doberman Pinscher? Maybe it could be new dog owner. So we could get rid of this retro here, leave it as Doberman Pinscher, and we could say new dog owner shirt and then leave the rest as is. And that again fills up most of our 140. We've got about seven characters left. We don't need to hit 140 if what you've got in there is satisfactory. Don't just start filling it in with random keywords. That's not going to help you at all. And so we've got good keywords in there that I think will serve as well on this one. Similar to that other listing, we're just going to go for modern here. I think that's perfectly acceptable for what we need for these purposes. Swift pod, we'll adjust these, edit margin, 65, save that, and publish. Brings us back. Every great once in a while, you'll get a couple that are hung up. You can see that these are still working, even though we've had some up here already get finished, and that's okay. They'll eventually load. You might just need to wait a while. But again, that's why we make sure that we have other ways of continuing to move forward. We don't want our processes to completely stall out while we're waiting on something to load. It's not a good use of our time. We want to make sure we can keep moving forward. And so for this one, we will be doing another one that works on these lighter colors. So I'm going to grab this pocket one, edit. And then we can get rid of that one. And then I'm going to grab this darker one here. Once that's loaded, we can adjust. And because this is going to be a larger design, we do want it to take up more space. So I'm going to leave it as is. And that was the point of why we made sure that we were starting with a large canvas in Canva to make sure that we always retain a high resolution on the images that we're uploading so that when I go to preview, you can actually see on the mock-up itself that it is filling up that entire front space. And if you look at it on a person, you can see that it is looking exactly the way we want it to. So we can save product. We're going to get rid of our mock-ups and then we'll come down here. So again, we've got a different theme going on with this one. It's similar to the hiking one that we did earlier. Again, if we had already had a template like that to start with, we could very easily have just duplicated that one and use some of those same keywords. And so for this case, we've got explore and conquer. This is all about mountains and hiking. So we can use some of those similar terms. We could also incorporate a more camping vibe. So we have hiking in the other one. We could have this one be a camping Doberman dog mom shirt. And then instead of a pocket, we could incorporate our mountain terminology again. We don't need a custom, so we could have hiking in here. Again, we started with a different front end of our title. We're keeping some of those same components that we know are going to rank higher in searches based on the competition and the keywords that we reviewed in E-Rank and Everby, but we're swapping it out with more of that aesthetic side of things Again, thinking about what our ideal customer might be searching for when a result like this pops up for them. Who is that buyer? What are they looking for? What's going to be their style that fits for them and will resonate for them? If they're a Doberman dog mom or if they're buying for a Doberman dog mom and that dog mom or dog parent is a camper, a hiker, someone who likes to go up in the mountains, this will resonate with them because that is what this design was based around. So that is why that research side of things is just as important as the design and the keywords itself so that you can know who it is that will be buying your product and how you can reach them in those search results. So we've got the rest of our title looks good. 
we're going to, we can say great outdoors again, because that's again, a few extra different keywords we used in the last one. So that will be good. Swift pod, all of that is fine. And then we will publish. And you can see this process moves very quickly when you're starting with a template. So we've got a few extra versions left. We've got Spooky, which had a bunch of colors. We've got Mary, which had a bunch of colors. And then we have this pink one. That's the other one. So three left. We are cruising right along. So we want one that has a lot of colors again. So we can use this one because we might actually pull in some of this fall in here. And so we'll swap that out. I believe we use all of these colors. So we can leave that alone. Let's do spooky first and then we'll adjust this down in size a little bit because we've already done our mock-ups. So we have a good idea roughly of what we want this to look like. So that looks good. We can verify on the preview that our sizing is where we want it. That looks good. Save get rid of our extra mock-ups here that we don't need. Now this is a Halloween themed spooky sweatshirt. So what are we going to use? We are going to use themes for our keywords. So Halloween Doberman Dog Mom sweatshirt, we can say spooky. Spooky is a common term used for that. So we've got Halloween, we've got spooky, and we can leave fall in there. I think that, that is perfectly acceptable. And for this one, I really want to have that Halloween keyword in there. So we've got that, and that's really all we need for our description. Head on down, all of this is the same, and we'll publish. Because we want one with all of those colors again, we can grab this one, duplicates, edits, and then this time we're grabbing our merry one as our last holiday version. And if I shrink this down just a little bit, we want it to still be on the larger side for letters. We can put that about there, right below the collar. We can preview to make sure it looks the way we want it to. We've got our white outline on the design itself, so it does stand out even though it's on a darker color. And it also works on this lighter color, which again was part of the reason why we did those on our mock-ups because we could get all that figured out relatively quickly instead of having to go back and forth and add or remove colors here. We already know, we've got it open right here. We already know exactly what colors we want for this. So it's again, all about being efficient and being able to move through these processes a lot faster by doing things in a certain order. Uncheck our mockups, head on down. This is a Christmas themed shirt. So we definitely wanna take advantage of those important keywords. I'm going to leave retro on here because it does have that retro lettering. And then we can also take advantage of Mary. Mary is another holiday term. So I think that would be a great way to incorporate that. And we can bring in that Christmas keyword here as well. Head down here, swap out our shipping, keep scrolling because all of this is the same and we'll publish. So we have one more left and then that is it for our Printify activities because again, remember, we're saving these other two personalized ones for the Etsy side of things when we get there in the next video because we'll be able to simply duplicate one that we've already got in there and then just swap out the mock-up. So that'll go really, really fast. So we want this last one. This one I recall had slightly different colors. It's got some of our basics in there, but then we also, I believe, swapped out one of our, we swapped out the green for more of that burgundy color. So let's come in here we can grab one of these existing ones that has all of the different colors on it. We'll duplicate, grab our listing. And then when we select, I want to drop the green 
and then I want to add maroon and then I'm going to grab our image that we need. I think this will be, this will make a really nice monochromatic style. We can make it even more monochromatic by having our first listing photo be this burgundy color sweatshirt. So I think this will do well. Again, we want this to be that large size to really take up space. And if we preview, you can see what that looks like. That looks exactly the way I want it to. So we can hit save. We'll uncheck all of our extras. And here, I'm going to use that monochromatic term because again, that's, that's a trending style. That is an aesthetic. That is a trending word that would be out there in our research. And so monochromatic is one that I would use. I am not going to use positively in the way that it's spelled out here. I could use kind of a positivity word down here, but I'm not going to spell it out in the cutesy way that we've done it here. Nobody out there is going to be searching for positively wild spelled as P-A-W-S. They're not. So that is why we don't necessarily describe the words that we've got on our design we think about the terms that our customers and our buyers are going to be using in order to find a style and a sweatshirt like this one. So monochromatic Doberman, I'm going to use this retro. I'm going to leave that in there instead of fall. I'm actually going to use wildflower because wildflowers are a common term that is used for different types of things and we need to shorten this. So again, I'm going to get rid of that extra sweatshirt in there and now we are good. If we wanted to swap out a couple other variations of this, if we wanted to make this a different, the other way that I would describe this is in the realm of cottage core. Again, with that wildflowers, with the monochromatic style, that is potentially an aesthetic that we could target here. So if we wanted to swap out some of these, you could. So one way we could do that is because we have Doberman in here a couple different times, I could swap out one of those. And so I'm probably not going to swap out the first one because that was very specific to our audience. And that was part of our very intentional keyword research. So I might do one of the ones that's a little bit later in here. So we have Doberman Dog Mom, we have Doberman Pincher Shirt. I'm going to swap out this last one. And instead of Doberman, I'm going to say Cottage Core. And again, that's going to get paired by Etsy's search algorithm in different ways so that we can potentially start to target different customers with this listing. And so the other option is if we wanted to leave the title alone, if we wanted to bring it down here, but again, the keywords that are in your description aren't ranked as high and in the same way as your title and tags within the Etsy search algorithm. It's important to have keywords in there, but in terms of like level or priority of importance, it's a little bit lower down on the scale than your title and your tags and even your attributes in some cases. In here, we could actually bring in another keyword. Um, as you'll recall, if you're with me for the research, vintage kind of grunge style was another one and we were going with that look a little bit here. So if we wanted to say vintage vibe, that is again another way that we could incorporate some different terminology. As we get to tags in the Etsy side of this process, you'll get to see kind of where we bring in some of those pieces and keywords as well, because we'll have 13 tags that we can use there. And you better believe we're planning on using all of them. So make sure you stick around for the next video in the series when I do that part of the process, because that is where we'll incorporate some of the work that we did in our research, some of the work that we did in our titles here, as well as in pulling in some of those other trending styles and aesthetics to try and target some different potential audiences. So we're going to publish our last one here. 
And that is, I believe, all of the ones that we want to do for now here in Printify. Yes, we still have a couple here hanging out, but by the time that we are ready to get to them in Etsy, they'll be complete. And if I go and look in Etsy, you'll see these. So if we go there right now and I refresh my page, you'll see that all of them, so these I believe are the two, the trekking and the heart one. So you can see that they're in here, but the problem is we want to make sure on Printify's side that this is done because if we try and go and edit this now, even if it's in draft, and if we do all the work and we save all of our mockups in there, sometimes because the two systems are still talking to each other in the background, I have found that if I do that too quickly and I don't wait for this process to finish, that it will overwrite what I put in here. So I always make sure to wait until the two systems are done talking, even if for whatever reason they get a little bit hung up. So just to know that they'll eventually finish out, you just might need to be a little patient, but again, we're not letting that slow us down. The next part of the process would be heading into Etsy and doing the listings. So as I said before, splitting these two sections up so that we could really focus and spend our time on being really efficient in Printify. So we'll let these finish and then in the next video, we'll come back and we'll go through in one fell swoop and we'll be posting all 12 of these designs and getting them all updated and listed on the Etsy side of things to make them active listings in one batch. Now that we've got all of those done and ready to go and have them saved as hidden listings on Etsy, they'll be ready and waiting for me when I get to that next part of the listing process, which is actually finalizing them in Etsy. And it's at that point where we'll then upload all of our mockups that we've already got ready to go. We'll add our attributes in the section that we want all of these listings to go in. We'll add in our tags and make sure everything is good to go when we're ready to publish. So make sure that you're subscribed and stick around for the rest of this time blocking series. I hope this has been helpful for you. And if you want to learn more about my strategies for thriving in your print on demand business, make sure you've got those notifications turned on for my channel so that you don't miss out on any of my content. And in the meantime, make sure that you check out the dedicated playlist with my full print on demand masterclass course right here for free on YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'm so glad you're here and I'll see you in the next time block. And if you're looking for more ways to continue the journey and stay connected, I'm excited to invite you to my brand new membership, the Simply Thrive Club. Unlike other programs, this is not a course. In fact, it's not even a program in the traditional sense. And that's because all of the steps that you need to build your print on demand business can be obtained for free on my channel. My in-depth course is not behind a paywall. So instead, this new membership is all about community with ongoing challenges to drive growth and a support system for accountability to keep going. It's goal setting to maximize your pockets of time and stay organized so that you can thrive even amidst a busy schedule. And it's action taking with expert resources and tools available in order to master skills necessary for scaling faster and more efficiently. This totally new platform is a community that is off of social media, including a community app, over 60 plus professional mockups with more on the way. There are monthly accountability challenges because did I mention I'm all about consistency? I've included the ability to request quarterly comprehensive shop audits, and there are live group calls each month where we can talk about all things print on demand, time blocking, setting realistic goals, binding process efficiencies, and so much more. Be sure to check it out. And in the meantime, keep going, keep learning, and keep growing in your print on demand journey.